My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people to make friends, I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, to teach. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Now, look, if you only learn one thing from the pandemic, I want you to remember this. I want you to remember that betting against the end of the world is a sucker's game. The next time you think the world is ending, you have to assume that it isn't. I want you to take the other side of the trade. I want you to bet against the end of the world. Now, on the anniversary of the worst part of the COVID-19 crash, we got to think about something. We have to think about how this market managed to surge to new highs. Even if it only dipped this afternoon, Dow slipping 128 points, S&P declining 0.16%, NASDAQ edging up 0.09%, tech-heavy NASDAQ, excuse me. We know it is easy to succumb to panic, which is what happened on March 16th last year when the Dow dropped nearly 3,000 points and the S&P gave up 12%, not in a year, not in a month, but in a day. The house of pain. Closing the day down 30% from the 2020 highs. Do you know that only nine names in the S&P finished in the green that hard day? Nine out of 500. 500 in the S&P. Now, don't I know it? I was as freaked out as anyone else. I spent the previous month screaming at the top of my lungs about the dangers of the pandemic. A lot of people felt I had been chicken little. I was saying how it could destroy whole industries, and the government was doing nothing. They know nothing! I want you to look at this clip from the end of the show one year ago. I tried to be constructive this evening, but I want to be sure you understand my view, okay? Not only are we not out of the woods, but, man, if you're in travel, you're in leisure, uh, entertainment, restaurants, okay, hotels, aerospace, bad. All right, bad. I don't, I don't have anything good to say. I, I have anything good to say since the Super Bowl, and I redouble my not having good to say. Redouble not anything good to say. Now, the question is, was that a misread of the situation? Absolutely not. If anything, it was the opposite. See, I was pleading with policymakers to do something, to think big, because this was a major horrendous crisis, and we didn't have time for the usual partisan bickering. I wanted action. The time had come to part the waters, and the waters had to be parted by the president, the treasury secretary, the speaker of the house, the Senate majority leader, and most important, the Federal Reserve. What's amazing is that the seeds for the turnaround were actually planted in that same 24-hour news cycle. The previous night, Fed Chief Jay Powell took to the airwaves and called for a full 1% rate cut. A huge round of bond buying. Buy, 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 buy! A, a slash in the discount window so desperate uh, banks could get capital, all of them. And a coordinated action by central banks all over the world to fight the collapse in economic activity. These were all huge positives. So we got to ask ourselves, wait a second. Why did the market flip out and crash the next day? Because Wall Street listened to a special Sunday edition of j Powell and jumped to the conclusion that things must be much worse than they looked. Otherwise, why make such drastic moves? In retrospect, the market was remarkably dumb. See, it, it also, and this was another one. Do you know that we got two big pauses that day that were completely overlooked? They were, they were asterisks, even as they held the metaphorical keys to finding the bottom. First, analysts learned that Tesla would have plenty of capital on hand, and the company would be able to make the numbers despite the production shutdowns. That news shocked the skeptics and caught the attention of what's most important, a new generation of less jaundiced investors, individual investors, who are about to get stimulus checks, put their money where their mouth is. Similarly, a little biotech outfit. It's called Moderna. It announced that their vaccine candidate had blocked the virus. Big trial? One patient. Stock soared 24%. Over the next few days, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin worked with Congress to put together a massive stimulus package, much larger than anyone could have dreamed. The market went up and down and up and down, depending on every single news headline. But it shouldn't have, because it was clear we were going to get a package. Still, even after that, the market remained skeptical. You know, we didn't actually bottom until a week later, when Congress passed the Gargantuan $2 trillion aid package, and Chairman Powell went on the Today Show 
warning people not to bet against the Fed. His key line, we're not going to run out of ammunition. That doesn't happen. And you know what? That was it. Today's show. Ever since this market's run up practically in a straight line, as it became clear that Powell wasn't kidding, he even went so far as implicitly backstopping corporate bonds so that troubled companies could keep borrowing money and wouldn't go under. Now, Wall Street stayed skeptical, though, as many high-profile hedge fund managers roiled the market with their own negativity. But when individuals got those stimulus checks from the government, the craziest thing happened. Lots of those people opened accounts at Robinhood or other commission-free brokers, and they went to work doing one thing, pretty much, and one thing only. They were buying buy, 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 buy. what the hedge funds were selling. Now, I've done a lot of work on that period, including talking to the trading desks and the people behind the scenes at the largest companies that were involved in brokerage. And these legions of new buyers, they went for what a lot of people felt were the most dangerous stocks imaginable. They just sat there every morning. Some of them started at 4.35 a.m. and they bought the cruise lines. They bought the airlines. They bought the stuff that I talked about was super dangerous. And, of course, they bought Tesla. Their buying was relentless. At the time, it did seem foolish, especially since the so-called smart money was still betting on the end of the world. The rest, though, is history. The government more or less did its job, putting a floor in the economy. But more important, the scientists really delivered. That Moderna vaccine that stopped one, one person's COVID a year ago, one person from being infected, turns out it, wor- it worked for millions, along with a similar two-shot combo from Pfizer. Moderna is now working on a pediatric trial to protect the last group that's still at risk that the FDA hasn't allowed any protection for its children. Remember, this was never a financial crisis. It was always a public health crisis. You keep the economy on life support until the pandemic is solved. You get to the promised land. That's what the that's what a week ago last what the week was last year. That's what it was about. Of course, there is a ton of cosmic irony. I mean, you know what? Look at this. This is a a today's Wall Street Journal front page. And it it does make me nervous. I've got to tell you that Uh, it makes me blanch more like it. It's the exact opposite of what they printed a year ago. Lead story. Air travel showing signs of turning a corner. Final travel is finally coming back. Here's another one. Banks eye cash reserves for profits. This is the single most positive piece the Wall Street Journal has ever published about the financials in ages. Look out. Or how about this one? Housing boom is different. It's a story that explains how the current boom is fueled by home buyers putting down big wads of cash. Not at all like the 2000s when it was all financed by debt. Then, if you want some levity, we got it. Tesla crowns its new techno king about uh, Elon Musk giving himself an absurd new title. He actually felt compelled to file with the SEC to make it official. Um, We can laugh now, but if he'd done that a year ago, his shareholder base would have had a panic attack. So when it looks like the world's ending, you have to bet that it won't end. But there is a flip side to the argument. Sometimes you get moments that are too good to be true. If j Powell saw a depression coming and decided to head it off, maybe one day he'll see an overheated economy coming in and he'll head that off by slamming on the brakes. Now, I doubt that's happening anytime soon. Uh, but he's been adamant that he won't tighten it until he really sees uh, he's, he's not going to tighten the first sign of inflation. The, the Fed has done that a lot of times and it's failed. Plus, Powell's been much more dovish since his rate hikes almost destroyed the economy at the end of 2018. But he ever learned his lesson. Here's the bottom line. Well, you know what? Your lesson is clear. When our policymakers actually learn from the past and our scientists work their magic, then the darkest moment really is just before the dawn. And the light at the end of the tunnel is genuine sun. Not that of an oncoming train. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.